Welcome back guys. Now I know it's been a quick minute, but for today's video, I want to take you through the basic principles on how you can create dynamic and unique graffiti pieces. This is more of an intermediate level. So if you are starting off from straight beginner, I suggest you go and look at some of my earlier tutorials so you can catch up to date on the basics of how to build up a graffiti piece. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in today's lesson. Okay, so we're going to start off from the very beginning. My name consists of five letters, S-O-T-E-P, so I'll be showing you these letters today, but it does not matter about the letters. What matters more is the process, and that's exactly what I'll be showing you today. So as a whole, when you think of a graffiti piece, first mistake many people do is they think of each letter individually as their, as their own um, character. If you really want to take it to an advanced level, you want to see your whole piece as one congruent piece. I mean, what I mean by this is the whole thing should have a shape by itself. So it might be coming from top to down, up to across, but the whole piece itself, all five letters, will come together to make a solid piece, hence the name piece. But obviously we are going to start off with the first letters and scroll across. So when it comes to graffiti layers, you first want to start off with a thread line. So for what I mean by this is something like this. We know an S shape, if I draw here, that's the basic S shape. See how you want to manipulate that. So if I just change this to straight, I can create this shape here, okay? Note, keynote, look how it still stays to the foundation of an S. It's still readable. This can be changed depending on your style. If you're a wild style artist, meaning you want to add loads of crazy effects, crazy arrows, loads of bits popping off or cracking off your piece, obviously the more you are going to exaggerate the base shape. So this is where it gets exciting. Already we have the frame. So let's start off with here. All we're going to do is block in a shape to follow this line, okay? So here's a block one. And what I'm just looking to do is accentuate that so it gets bigger to this point and smaller here. Now I'm always looking and guiding where next I'm going to put my next shape. So here I like this. I'm just going to thicken this up actually. So like a tube shape here. And as I'm going, I'm anal always analyzing, analyzing what it is I want to be doing. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, right, there's the flow, and that's two shapes. But how am I going to connect the two? Because obviously, you want to show that it's all one piece. So I think, okay, I'm going to add this sort of shape here. And I'm starting to build up the basics of um, letter S by adding things. This I like, but I feel like here I can exaggerate more. So I'm using the thread line, which we first put down for an S and exaggerating that further, which I think looks a lot better already by doing this. And I'm not worrying about too much details right now, I'm just sketching in. What I'm gonna do is block this off. So now I've got this kind of shape here, so it's like that. <coughs> what I like to do is always add thicker shapes with thinner shapes because you have more contrast. The same way if you're drawing a portrait, it's cool to have darker tones in the portrait because then you're going from the darker range to the lighter range, and the same with a layer. Thick shapes next to super thin shapes. The high level of contrast from lines gives it a lot of flavor. And here we have this shape going down. And don't be afraid, afraid to change the thread shape as we go. So I like this, I do like this a lot, but I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna use the same sort of thickness shape like this for now, like so. And as I'm doing this, this is where the interesting thing comes out. I know my O is coming into play. So by that, I put this line across. This is going to affect my O massively because now an O shape, if I draw the thread, will have to fit somewhere. So it could come out from somewhere like maybe here. That would still make sense. Or even something like come out through here, you can do. But then the T will have to come somewhere like here. So I'm always thinking advanced of where the piece is going later on down the line. So I'm fully aware to make the S, this shape has to come in play, but it's block, blocking the rest. It could block the flow or it could enhance the flow. This is why I encourage you to take your pen and pencil, um, draw along with me, even if it's these layers, because there's so many nuances to be learned as we move forward. And this is what makes it so much fun and just great to get your teeth stuck into it. Okay, so now we start to have this. Now we've got this shape here. Sometimes you can use negative space as well to make your letters look better. So here is a negative space. So I can put a circle here. The circle is not part of the letter, but it lets me build something around there. So where I put that negative space in, I can go, okay, I'm following this. Okay, like so. Now I'm putting my next block in. 
following this shape. Here I can put the, the edge of the shape here, the middle of the shape here, but I'm going with the general shape. Like so. And don't be afraid to come into each shape because later on, if I show you now, this, this section here, this is a cool effect you can do. This block, which is separate from this, is now coming in. This is a very cool technique and it's cutting in through here. And think about your line thicknesses. Sorry if I'm going too fast, but it's kind of exciting to share this all with you. So slow it down if it's too fast. There's a lot to get through today. And this line thickness, see how it's consistently thick? As I come here, it comes to a point. If you're using spray paint, paint you create this effect by something called a cutback, where this is one color, say this is white and I have a black. I put the black down with the spray paint, this end would be thick, grab the white and cut it back, like, and then you create a sharp line towards the end. Literally, spend yourself 20 minutes, an hour learning how to do cutbacks, and your pieces will look a lot more cleaner. Um, just for example, here's another shape it does that. Like, as it comes to the outer, outer layer, when it comes in, it gets thinner, but on the outer side, it gets thicker. And I'm only committing to these lines right now because I'm just demonstrating this, but obviously you want to wait to the very end before you start really committing to your to your lines. Here I like to divide these two shapes now. So we have this one block up here, let's put a line here and divide it. Reason being, it gives, it gives us more elements to add to it as well, so we're now treating each shape separately. Here I like to add, always add like stuff like a notch on top that comes back into that base shape. It starts to build up a bit more character. Now here, I'm looking at this piece, there's nothing leading the eye into the viewer yet, there's nothing pushing it, it sort of starts here, which is cool actually, it's quite kinetic. But I want something with a lot more of a wild style, more of an aggressive feel. And I'm going to do this by showing you this line. Now look at that. Now it's like standing. You see how it's like pushing the viewer's eye in? This is going to do a few things later on on the piece. This is now going to give me a guidance line. So instead of, some people get guidance, guidelines at the beginning, like middle, top, bottom, which is cool for the calligraphy. But I like to build freely my first letter. And this is going to give me my guidance line for the piece now. This is this is how I work. So that's gonna give me my first guidance line. The second I'm putting out a shape up here. So I know it's gonna be here. And this is gonna later on show me where my letters are existing. So let's carry on with this S right now. Let's put a kicker up here. So it's not touching this, but it's just wanting to be a part of the top of S. You see it wants to join in and it's almost there. And it just reaches up. And I want it also not to overlap too much. I'm gonna make sure it comes in, tucks in just next to where this shape comes in. And here, I'm gonna add like a block. I want it to be standing strong. So this is like a foot. If you can imagine a foot, it's standing on this. Pow, it's almost like an arrow now. And here, I wanna keep it loose as well. And create something that has to be thicker. Just like this, okay. So going with that, completely changing the shape of the S just by doing that. I'm actually gonna bring this thicker. I want it to kind of connect to this. Um, I might just add like something like a, hmm, what should I, I can bring this down further. I'll bring this down further so it actually connect, but also getting smaller as it's coming back around. And see where this mistake line was? I'm using that, I'm using that straight up. I'm taking that line and it matches up with this line here we did earlier. Now for the back here, I feel it's empty. See, here's a problem area in my head. We could round it off like this, bam, bam. But to me, it's too abrupt. It's too much, it's just too strong of a shutdown. It's just shutting the whole shape down in my mind. So starting with the base shape, I know something has to go here. So why don't we just put a square up top, like military, because we've got a square shape sort of here. Do similar right up here. and maybe lean it forward. Now, to be honest, the square shape has changed the look of the S completely. If you just take it back before we did this, it now has more of a, I would say like a tank feel. Like it looks like militarized, it looks strong. Because I thought it looked way too much free flowing and loose. And that is all coming down to the shapes we're using. So we start off with the loose thread shape at the very beginning. And as we go and we can thicken them up and then you end up with something that looks like, um, in my eyes, a transformer. But maybe you might say, okay, that was cool. But I kind of want something looser. So then we stick with a looser line up top, like this. You see how that free flows? 
like this and you can easily do something like connect it up and stick up so you've got half the armor up top so it's still strong it sort of looks like it's about to fire something out which i kind of like but by doing this can you see the weight of the letter it's falling back now there's a this is the only thing here this shape is the only thing keeping this balanced so you might add something up the front here this is a very complex letter S, <laughs> so that's like I said, if, it, if you are finding this too too much to digest right now or you're just panicking, head back to some earlier tutorials where we go through the basics and then move on to this because doing this, um, it's going to take, you need some understanding already, maybe you've done a few pieces to grasp it a lot better. But if you do understand this, it's a good sign, you know, it's time to really level up and just find new ways to express yourself through graffiti art and letters and it's limitless can you see what i've done already okay so now what's this done we, we hit something else in my mind boom 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 it's got a strong leg it's standing on the back i just feel like there's something needs to come here from this piece now to balance it off because you've got corner one two three and four there's ways you can do this you can let the o balance this up that's one way the o will actually have to be something like this now because look there's weight to this okay so it's weighted so what this means is the o if i just draw the outline will have to fit something like this can you see how that fits in there opposed to at the beginning where i said people think about each letter separately if you did that you'd end up with the o being here the t being here e p and yeah you've got a straight running panel piece but it's not congruent it's not a collective and you really miss out the power of having having something that's solid together as one whole piece it reminds me as a quick story when i first started there's a website called graffitifonts.com you had different graffiti fonts terrible fonts rarely but cool when you begin they're really cool to play around with i would go to each page take the letters i like pin them together and then i would go and sort of kind of paint it but it looked like a mess because each layer was completely different yeah it said my name but each layer was different and um yeah it just didn't didn't look right as an end result so yeah so here where it's coming down I'm trying to think of if I should just leave it there put a line across like so I might put this line here as well just to hold it together and it looks like it's standing a bit stronger than previous but the O shape next to something so complex not all your letters have to be complex either um, actually Smo's good at this like he he has like a crazy S M the O sort of tucks in and then the E just pushes the whole piece down um, and we're just literally going for that same effect here. Make some adjustments as you're going. And what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just gonna outline this S, okay? So everything that's there, you can see it's in place. Um, I'm gonna outline it quickly before we move on, just so we have the starting letter and see how the rest of the letters combine. What we have is graffiti letter S. And I know what a few of you are saying, well, that's very good and all, but that's just like Sotep's S. I don't want to be copying you. Well, the good thing is this tutorial is not about copying. It's just about the principles, what I showed you. We started with a thread. You can do it again. If I just show you down here in a smaller scale, just quickly, like this, okay? Look, just, oh, is that an S? Yeah, there's an S, okay. And look, if I just throw it on quickly, in your own style, no matter what your letter will be, here you go. Here you go, you have, an, you have another S. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we've got a simple thread, I'm blocking it off. Also, you don't go this fast when you do it. I mean, <laughs> this is quite crazy. But there, there you go. You have an S already. I'm so, um, let me just let me just uh, darken this out for you quickly. And I'll just show you. Like that took what five seconds. Different style. It's the same. What you like. Throw the thread down first from the basic layer. Ding, and then build up how you want to build up and play around with it, like sculpting. I'm just giving you the principles, like the principles, like boxing. I can teach you how to throw a proper punch, but you stylize it and you add that extra flair. That's all on you. So. Listen to what I'm saying, but where can you add your elements to it? You really think about your style, not my style, your style, and go your own way. A simplistic S again, um, completely different from this, but just using the same principle of just building up a thicker shape around the thread shape. Um, for the O here, because we're thinking about the whole thing as a piece, like we said earlier, the thing we're going to do is look for where we can connect later on. So here I've dipped this down, so it's, we have the guidance line, it's dropping down from the guidance line because this has a lot of weight coming from this direction, as you can see. See it's shooting across like that, okay, so for this, 
I think I'm gonna cut it off like this. This is an angle. I'm copying this over here. There we go. I'm exaggerating. So this is coming across. Whoop. I'm taking that. Whoop. And later on, I'm gonna figure this out. Sometimes you can do this. You can preempt, preemptively strike your letters, <laughs> if that makes sense to some of you. And I'm gonna just throw it there. Later on, we're gonna see what continues. So I'm giving a lot of movement, uh, movement stretching across like this. And here, I just wanna follow this shape a little bit as well. So I'm gonna bring it out a little bit from the basic shape of the O and like kick it off like this. So there we go, connect to the O and then I'm just bringing it around and give it more, more of a sort of coming in shape. So it's coming in, maybe just stick to the whole roundness actually. And then obviously you're gonna see the center of the O start to take place, center stage like this. Just add that line across, which we have up here, separating the two. Just like so. That come across, and building across. It's got a bit of flavour now. It's a bit different than usual, but still really simplistic and not out of place with the graffiti piece. And now we move on with a central letter, a T. So we're seeing the shape and where it flows. What if I was to ask you now, where do you think a T would fit in straight away? Would it make sense to do this? Have the you know like a T shape is this, right? So if we bend that, would that make sense to you? The only problem with that is if you say that is then you've got a gap here, which may be too much negative space. Because look how tight these are. These are quite tight tucked in. We want something else to be tucked in. What I would personally go for is a line this way, the opposite way. So you see, follow this line because it's a T and it's quite strong. I'm bringing it where we had that center line, which the S gave us, sorry, the base line. I'm just gonna come up and through it. So it's like a spear, just smashing through. And here, I might just thicken this up. So now it gives me something to work on, like a piece of clay. Coming down, super big and really impactful. Like this. That's just a base shape, but look already, look already how it's coming together. And now you know with the top, it's got two T bits. Where this is the center line, you can exaggerate that too. I, I sort of want to make this shape of this piece be like up center of the T and maybe come down, you know? So we can just add something to do that. So it comes up the piece. I'm not thinking about, oh, it's a letter T. I'm just thinking right now, where is my piece flowing? You see this as well? Look at the bottom. It matches, it mirrors the top, almost identical. It's a little bit different. It waves with the bottom, it waves with the top, and now that is just absolutely beautiful. That's just like so much kinetic movement. It's exciting to see it when it starts to fully develop. So here I'm taking this. So now we've got a base down, okay? We have a base. Obviously I'm not gonna keep these like this. This has to obviously come down because you want to be the same thickness each shape. This is really thick. So it might be thick this end, but as it comes in, it comes smaller. It comes smaller but bigger at this end. Gives it a lot more movement as well. Here I'm feeling like there's a lot of empty space here now. And there's a number of ways you can approach this. We can add a little, a little, uh, this little, what do you say, like a little, little out placed thing. And then you can just connect a few like this. Or you can start allocating the other letters from like the O. You can just, the O sort of wraps around and something happens up here, you know? But still making sense to the O. So now I'm just gonna start developing this T and I come that to that layer, but I just know that's something that I wanna I wanna do. So here I'm gonna make it so it's smaller, but the T is stretching across the whole piece. It's coming up. I think here I'm just gonna add an indentation to level it out and bring it across just like so. And here I'm look I bring that as well. Like this. So it's quite simplistic really. I'm matching this end now, so you've got to look at that. That's gonna end here, not so far as that has gone. And then you've got a basic structure for the letter T. There's an empty space here, and this is a problem. So I wanna fill it with something. So here where the T comes in. I'm just gonna add the same sort of shape like this. So it comes across like so. 
maybe at the top pin it up maybe we're gonna run a paper here but you can imagine it's just it's just coming off the paper so like this and then it's gonna also come across here go through the S and connect like this Now we have this, a lot of weight here, it sort of pushes up, I'm going to pit that shape in, like a little step up, and then throw this, so it's like an arrow in itself, just like so. And there we have is the S, the O and the T, make some adjustments to the O here. And this is how we slowly, slowly move on to each letter using the same thing. We've got the basic structure building up to each one, but each letter is coming, is complementing the next to create this shape. So like I said before, it's coming up and now I'm going to start now falling back down. So now we move on to the letter E. And as you can see, it's a build up. It's a build up process happening. And as it's going as well, go back and make adjustments. Okay, so this might come down further down. Obviously this S is here. And... Yeah, just make your slight uh, adjustment. So now we're like E. E is the next layer. And once again, you start off with knowing this is the E shape here. It's quite simple. But what happens if you start bending this up, okay? So we end up with something like this. Almost like a tag. And tagging does help. If tagging is like the basic form of graffiti pieces. I know you don't see a lot of tags from me, but trust me. Tagging is like just figuring out. If you're doing a figure drawing, it's almost like the expressive lines. And we bring it into the letter form, like so. So I'm gonna copy this here, like this, okay? So, boom, then come down, be loose. Oh, that's gonna sit in here. You see the space? Like, I should, I should do it so I'm not. I, I, I let you guess where the, the letter will be. Here it sits in. Here I want it to come tuck in here. So I'm just gonna draw it coming in. It's gonna be tucked in. This is hugging it, like it's always got its arm around it, just grabbing it in. And then here I want to create something like a kick out. So we've got this line here. I'm thinking about this. It's coming up. And this is probably going to come back down. And look at this. Can you see already how much that one letter has given the whole piece structure? This is what you've got to get your head around. It's creating the whole piece of structure, not individual letters. And then we play around with it. Okay, so we know for a fact this has to be thickened up, shape one. And I wanted it to get bigger at the back, so it's coming in. It's really getting hugged up by this. I'm going to add another shape here because it. I feel like it really has to... I almost use that shape to accentuate this with so the T. This is T's best friend right now, is, is bring, carrying on the shape on through the piece. Nothing's stopping the flow, it's all flowing, boom. Now I know I want this shape, so I know later on I've got to connect it here. Like this. So that, that was a little bit, a little bit fast. Um, but I'm just letting, it, letting the letter write itself, okay. Like so, and it's coming back behind this letter, like so. This is a very interesting shape, like here. So I'm gonna thicken this up and get thinner as I get down. And I'm not thinking about connecting just yet, like connecting it to, I'm just placing it. And I think later on when I see how do I wanna connect this to, I can leave it like this. I could put a block in like we did similar here, but I kind of like this, it's quite an organic shape. If you like it, you leave it. And if you don't, you start just making changes, but make sure you just get the basic, the, the basic shapes thicken them first before you start going into greater details and start really edging in what it is you want to create. And we're just going to cr once again repeat the process. So like I said earlier, the thin lines or the thick lines, here where it gets a bit thin, let's thin it out to here. And just have something like this. The reason being is I want to create it so it's not got too much weight on the back because the rest of the letter will start falling this way. As you can imagine, if there's too much here, like if you can imagine your shape, so if I draw it in for you quickly, it's probably something like this, yeah? Or something around that scale. I don't draw it perfectly because I'm just showing the weight of it. I kind of want this to match that without being too crazy. Otherwise, this basic thread layer would be like this, you know? Which is absolutely massive. It's taking over so much space. So here I'm going to sort of bring this down to complement this shape without being too much down. So it's coming in a tiny bit. I'm just thickening up right now. I'm not worrying about connecting these two shapes. I'm just thinking, like, I've broken the shape into two parts. I'm just going to block it in for now. This O is still coming in. I might do it so it comes in like this. You can put it anywhere you want. 
and let's go. Now sometimes you can also throw shapes and reach to it later and what I mean by this is I want a similar shape to that to be here. So I'm actually just going to like mirror this for now. Same shape coming out like that. Coming out just like so. Keeping the thicknesses the same throughout. So it has that shape. Now if you're looking at it, you're thinking, okay, now we've got this has to reach to this. And this could be a number of different shapes. You could do a shape like that to come across. You could do it so it breaks that, that one time and you've got this shape across. It really is up to you and what you want to go with, but it is all about building up shapes until you find yourself with something you desire and you really, really like. So you really have to go with your inner voice. Um, and just keep practicing and learning and just trust the process of building up all these different shapes Just like so So here we said we want to connect the two you could have gone for this shape So that would have been like one shape here divide and then one shape up So your basic shape now ends up like this but I'm gonna go for just this so it's just gonna Yeah connect down like so all the way down, all the way down, and connect like that. I always have a style of letters that sort of look like animalistic. Like to me, this E has a mouth. Like here's the mouth, and it's like on top. I'm just gonna make this a bit, a bit shorter, a bit smaller. Give it that rabbit ear. I think I went a bit big on that, and I'm adjusting now as we move forward. Now I'm going to think, okay, what do I want to do with this shape that comes across? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it come over, touch on this, pew, smaller here, and like so. Make this longer, I want this to be more, there's a lot of empty space here. Bring this closer too, and now I'm adjusting and filling up the spaces that I want to portray in the graffiti piece. Can you see what's happening now? as a whole it's coming together I put this little tick here, I might do the same here as well just something there little things like that bring the whole thing as a congruent piece as in separate and now we've got this amazing shape it's flowing across and it, as it comes towards this end feel it like <laughs> it sounds so hippie but start feeling it feeling it out so it's coming across it's literally everything's pulling this way now so this means we pull to this shape so the P, if I want to box it in before I even draw it, it's gonna be like this. It has to. Can you see? Boom. If you can master this, it's like, it, it, it just opens up so many doors for exploration, makes it so much more fun. Um, and you start thinking, okay, I'm not thinking about individual letters. Yes, they are individual letters, but how can I make them look like one whole congruent piece? And if you have a character on the end of this, oh, you are levels, man. You are levels. But you have to go your own way and, um, Really experiment, and that's that's fun. So, for the P, we know it's coming like this. Okay, it's so, okay. Take it straight up that shape. So first, okay, I take it back to just throwing the thread lines. That's a P. We know the shape has to come like this. So this top bit is going to be altercated like this, which has to come back in. And then the base is whatever you want to do with it. P like this. P. And that's the shape we're going to use for this. So here, just put a basic in, and it's got to come back in. It's thrown out there now, and it coming, it's coming home. And then more, I want it more exaggerated, so I'm bringing it in crazier. So I know that's the top shape, and now I know the rest of the P thread line. It has to kick in here. There's so much space here. It has to kick in and support that P. So now, once again, that would be the shape I want. I know that for sure. This probably has to come in more. And then I want it, see that where it's kicking off? It has to come out, but I know it comes across here. So it's probably gonna, where this point is, the line up whoosh, perfectly there. The whole thing has its own weight to it. It's very calligraphy-esque. And yeah. Let me just show you how we thicken this up. So this we know is shape one. It's just coming in. Shape two. 
oh, sorry, line two, same shape. We added this notch here, which has been throughout this piece, like here and here. So I'm just gonna add that same shape. Just connect the two. That's a connecting, uh, connecting point for sure. Boom. Okay. I actually have to make this a little bit smaller to match the other letters. Oh, I'm a bit too excited on that to show you, showing you how to make it expressive. Um, but it's just because it's such a unique way to approach your graffiti piece, and it really does work. It really does uh, excel your graffiti pieces. Um, at the beginning stages, like I said before, I was always thinking about each individual letter, but I'd have each different letter. And I was, and when I was younger, I would take from different artists, so it's so obvious. I have like a C and S, and then like a Bates. Oh, but this this is had different names. So it wasn't the same name, but it's just it doesn't look congruent. It looks fake, and uh, it doesn't really look that unique. So here we go. We're just building this up now, like we had done previously with all the letters. Here, thin line. Remember the thick and thin line technique. Let's add a thin line coming down. Not that thin, but then it comes to a point where now it's thick again. We know we want to create this shape, so let's put that in. This block shape here, ding ding, mirror it, ding ding. Not worry about what's like what's connecting it right now. I'm just putting the shape in, and I know something has to connect to it, so we will go for that. I kind of like this clicking into this. It's quite organic. It's like a leaf shape. Boom, boom. Quite, quite nice. And maybe we could do something unique, and I'll try experiment with you guys. So. Let's try something I haven't seen before, and that is to come back up and then have something kicking off. So it's not really anything. But this is the first time I've ever put a sort of shape off this this way. It's flowing, it's flowing with this, so that needs to come out a little bit to connect closer to this. And this is more of just a background element or a supporting layer of the piece. But once you are happy with your sketch and everything and the way it's been going, it's now time just to darken the whole thing up and then you have your sketch lines solid. And what I want to show you something quickly on the side is, I know sometimes you think, yeah, you can't teach graffiti, you know, everyone has their own style, everyone has to learn from each other and build foundations. And I just want to show you quickly on this little piece here, it's not about copying exactly, it's about the principles, that's the key, like I said before. So, oh, there you go, we know what an O looks like, boom, done. T, we know what T looks like if you put it down here. Boom, T, but what are we doing? We're just adding shapes around it. That's it. See, look, this shape's different completely to the top top piece. This is definitely more of a throwy style. But I just wanna show you guys that you can have style with simple shapes even. Um, e, we know what E looks like, okay, let's do that. E, like so. Okay, that has to be close to the T, we know that, we've been doing that. And look at the speed once you start understanding the simpler shapes bit build on each other. And the P, it has to come and sort of reach that shape similar. We know a P. And then we can just play with it like so. <laughs> so yeah guys, you don't have to stick with the same um, experiment and play around. I'm now just going to darken up the whole thing so you can see. When it comes to lines, as you saw with here earlier, that's what I'm doing on the outside, like around here. This will be thick, a thick line, but if the line ever meets, it wants to come into the shape. So let me show you an example, like, oh, up here, then it cuts off. And if you guys enjoy these lessons and really want to expand on your graffiti art, characters and illustrations, go over, head out the Patreon, but currently we're learning how to draw hands and eyes to progress your character development. Not only that, but it is a great help to keep this channel running and allows me to bring these free lessons completely free of charge to the public. There we have it. Once outlined, you'll end up with something that looks just like this. Now, there's so many different elements to go and add to make this go further. Also, like 3D, background, drop shadows from each layers. But I feel like for today's lesson, this has been enough for you guys to just take in. Um, otherwise, we'll be here for hours and hours. So we'll just take it one step at a time and leave this graffiti piece here. Um, as always, Thank you so much for you guys for clicking this video and watching and coming on this journey with me. And a massive thank you to everyone on the Patreon team. We're over there, there's exclusive tutorials, behind the scene action, 
for people that want to get their art knowledge and expand it further. So I hope you enjoyed in today's lesson. Any questions, leave in the comments. And for the next video, I hope you've been staying well and I will see you all later.